1924 and 1945, Franklin Delano Roosevelt, our nation's 32nd president, made 41 visits to the rural community of Warm Springs in Georgia. Roosevelt, who was stricken with polio in 1921, came seeking treatment in the warm waters provided by nearby springs. Constructed in 1932, his cottage on Pine Mountain would become known as Little White House. The eyes of a nation would focus here on April 12, 1945. That afternoon, while having his portrait painted, the president collapsed. A news flash sent by teletype around the world reported Roosevelt had died of a cerebral hemorrhage a short while later. Roosevelt would leave Warm Springs for the last time on April 13, 1945, as his body was returned to Washington, D.C. Today, Little White House serves as a memorial to the 32nd president. Visitors tour a museum displaying Roosevelt artifacts, and interpretive displays highlight his administration's accomplishments. Special events include a Roosevelt reenactor, as displayed later in this video. Roosevelt is portrayed by Robert Prater of Warm Springs. We all need a vision to succeed and this great man inspired us to believe We all need a vision to succeed And this great man inspired us to believe Franklin Delano Roosevelt I have seen your message felt In the eyes of those who cannot see In the minds of those who cannot talk On the souls of those who cannot walk You've given us your strength and courage to succeed. We all need a vision to succeed. And this great man inspired us to believe. We all need a vision to succeed. And this great man inspired us to believe. Tell us a little bit about your relationship with Winston Churchill. Your memories? Oh, winning. Yes. I was telling the ladies from England just a while ago, I, of course, Winnie and I are cousins, but we became very close when I was cohorting with him to help the British in the beginning of the war. And I made many trips over to Britain to visit with him, and he made many over here to visit with me. And sometimes it seemed we met in the middle. He never came down here, though. I think he heard too many stories about my driving around here. <laughs> I did get him in the car with me once. I don't know whether you've been to Hyde Park or not, but there's a, a little precipice there. And one day I decided he needed to be shown my driving skills. Well, the folk around here will tell you I tend to be a little bit fast. In my cars, they've got two gears. Go and stop. Go as fast and stop as fast. But we got right to the edge of the prefaces and I put on the brake and we stopped. I think Winnie thought we were going to continue on over. And I don't remember if he's ridden with me since then or not. <laughs> but you know when he would come over here, I would treat him to good old American food, including hot dogs. Of course, when I visited him, I took tea at three. I also ate what he ate. Some I liked, most I liked, but there were a few things. Wasn't much chicken over there. 
and I do love my chicken, especially since coming down here. Someone made a remark to my staff once when I had some visitors here. They went out and turned to the staff and said, I didn't know that the president had a southern accent. I still was a staff member. I said, well, you must remember, I was educated first by a German tutor and then by a French tutor. Then I went to the Groton School in Massachusetts and matriculated at Harvard. And I picked up some of the Bostonian accent while at Harvard and have kept it. And of course, going back and forth with Winnie, I have had to pick up a little bit of the British accent as well. And now that I have been coming to Warm Springs for, what, 20, 21 years, and all of that fried chicken that Daisy has fed me, don't you think I should have a little bit of a southern accent? <laughs> these are good days. I'm enjoying these days here at Warm Springs when I get a chance to come down because I get to see folk like you, folk that become friends. And you might even vote for me. <laughs> Again, thank you for coming and visiting us. I hope that you have learned a little bit about Warm Springs and the beauty and the history of this magnificent place. And of course, most of the programs that we began in 33 when I took office started because of my friends and neighbors here in Warm Springs in Maywood County. I don't know whether any of you were out here when I was telling the folk about why I developed the Rural Electrification Administration. But when I got my first light bill here, it was four times what Mama was paying for the lights in the big mansion at Hyde Park. And I got to checking and I found out that most of my neighbors could not afford electricity. And so I said, when I become president, one of the first things I want to do is begin a program that will bring affordable electricity to my friends and neighbors in Meriwether County. The Civilian Conservation Corps, the CCC, started here. I love the trees. If you went up to my farm on the mountain, you would see row after row of trees that Art and I planted. And so I felt that we needed to give these boys who had plenty of muscle, plenty of vitality, but lacked jobs, something to do. <clears throat> and so I began the CCC and all the other programs were begun because there was a need. And most of them began because that need started here and not in the city. Oh, I could go on for the whole afternoon <laughs> talking about things here at Warm Springs. But I hope that you will enjoy it. If you haven't, Go down to the pools and see where it all began. And come again. And maybe you can come when I can get Daisy to mix us a pitcher of lemonade and some of her good homemade cookies and we'll sit and talk for that. We all need a vision to succeed. And this great man inspired us to believe. We all need a vision to succeed. This great man inspired us to believe.